Hello everyone, my name is Sean Langan and I'm here to give you a little quick overview on Physics 133. Um, it's, uh, the title of the course is Elements of Physics 1 with the lab. That's going to be important later. And again, my name is Sean Langan and it's about November 18th, 2020. So almost Thanksgiving time, but not quite yet. So let me uh, show you here a few of the essentials for Physics uh, 133. So it's a course which is the first of two courses in a sequence of physics courses. Uh, it uses algebraic methods to solve real-world problems, mostly related to non-physics majors uh, or, or even engineers and things like that. So uh, you'll find this a very applicable course, I think. Um, the topics that will be discussed are kinematics, of fluids, thermodynamics, and waves. And those in a little more detail would be kinematics is like the study of motion, in fluids, you might be able to guess the study of how liquids behave, and then thermodynamics is more about uh, how energy transfers via heat, and waves are waves, but you'll see uh, they really apply mostly to sound and light. Uh, the math prerequisites for the course are 110, 111, or 225. However, let me say more generally that the course, course does rely pretty heavily on math, so you're going to want to brush up on that if you haven't had them in a while. And then lastly, it's a four credit course with a lab. So you're going to want to include uh, time or make time for an at-home lab component as well. So let's go through the course outcomes very briefly. Uh, as I kind of hinted at, this uh, kinematics is basically the study of motion of macroscopic objects generally, although it can apply to microscopic objects as well. So we're going to do quite a bit of that. You're going to do some uh, principles of conservation. That's a big one in physics, so the idea that energy and momentum are often conserved. Then you'll get into some fluid dynamics, or the motion of liquids, fluids. Uh, do some description of oscillatory motion, and that would be waves, kind of. Then you're going to explain how waves can transfer energy and describe wave motion, and a few other things. I won't go into every single one of those, because I really want to get into the right part of this slide, which is how this relates to your field. Okay. So in general, the topics will help you visualize the physics of human motion, blood flow, sound in ways that cannot be done in the standard, say, biology course or uh, other medical technology course. So we're going to give you the fundamental look at all of these principles. And then having, these, gra having a grasp of these uh, concepts based in physics will further develop your ability to analyze the unique scenarios that come up often in either medical technology, medicine, or other disciplines, well, IT, technology, things like that. So having that fundamental uh, look at the concepts you will study in your career will really help you be able to understand the limitations of some of the concepts you may study in other courses. So that's an important factor is when does my uh, theory not apply? A very important thing in physics and, of course, in discipline, other disciplines as well. So that gives you a little bit of a background into why would one take Physics 133. So I'm going to finish up here with what you really need to know. Uh, some basics, take-homes, you gotta got to know this stuff. On the left here you'll see it's important to take time to commit to the lab component. It's a heavy component of the course, so you're going to want to make sure every other week or so you're going to have time to do an experiment with space, a bit of peace, and things like that. Uh, the equipment will be sent to you, but uh, you're going to need time to sort it all out. And there's directions that will help you, of course, but many students think that physics is often just uh, writing down a solution to a problem and that's it. But with a lab, you're going to have to be able to sort of work through the hands-on materials as well. Uh, the course, as I hinted at earlier, is pretty heavy on the mathematics, uh, and that mathematics you need to know is an assumed knowledge. Now, what does that mean? It means that not much course time will be spent going over the mathematics needed to be successful in the course. So please do uh, either refresh your memory on some of the fundamentals of mathematics that you'll need for the course, which would be, which would be largely algebra, trig, uh, and, or be prepared to go back and talk to the instructor, of course, uh, for hints on how to study for those mathematical concepts and or um, be prepared to look up some uh, videos and how-to uh, demonstrations of the mathematics needed. So that's something that's going to be like, okay, we know you can do this, 
let's move on into the physics of that mathematics, right? So something that students often are surprised by. So again, the mathematical requirements are 110, 111, or 225. So where will you go from here? Uh, some students will finish at 133. Uh, that will be the last course they need from this sequence. But many of you will move on to Physics 134. That is the next course in the sequence. And it begins exactly where 133 leaves off. So I won't go into the details of that course in this video. But really, you'll just jump right into 134. And most students find it useful to take 134 right after 133 because the, memory, uh, the, the material is still fresh in their memory. And this is often a very good sequence of courses for taking, say, the MCAT for medical students, uh, as well as any other biophysics or medical technology students might find both courses extremely helpful and will lead you into more advanced courses in those specific areas. So I hope this video was a bit uh, helpful for you and giving you a nice broad overview. But uh, do enjoy your uh, time in the course and keep in touch with your instructor should you have questions. Thank you.